Greetings and welcome to On The House Marketing for Real Estate. Today we're going to talk about why your family are not your friends. You will constantly hear from your colleagues and your mentors that you should work your sphere of influence. But today we're going to cover how that strategy will sabotage your real estate success. Hi, I'm Bert, your favorite marketing expert and real estate photographer. You might ask, but Bert, why would working on my sphere of influence, my friends, my family members, and referrals that I might have, how could that possibly destroy my real estate career? Well, we've all heard that 90% of real estate is sold by just 10% of your colleagues. Now, while that number may not be exactly accurate, the overall theme is very true. In fact, according to the National Association of Realtors, by the end of June last year, of the 1.6 million realtors in the U.S., 1.3 million of you sold three homes or less. Wow! Only 8% of the entire licensed real estate professionals sold four homes in the first half of the year. So the fact of the matter is that the vast majority of real estate agents are struggling to close transactions, right? Well, ask yourself, why is that? I'll tell you why. It's because sales is a contact sport and you need a lot of contacts to be successful and not just real estate sales, any kind of sales. So why do real estate agents fail? Because they fail to recognize that their job, when you break it down to the simplest form, is marketing. That's right, your one job is marketing. And most agents simply do not do anywhere close to enough of it. The reason why the vast majority of real estate professionals fail is because they rely on their sphere of influence to build their business. It's a false safety blanket. The flaw in this business plan is that you do not know enough people to build a successful business. In a recent study I read, it says that the average person has 255 relationships with people that they influence. In other words, we know about 255 people who are similar to us who might take our advice. That's it, 255 people. And almost none of them are moving in the next six months. So if you're relying on 255 people that will actually listen to what you have to say, you will starve your mortgage payments to death. And you'll hear real estate people complain all the time that their sister ended up hiring their competitor instead of them, or my neighbor, or my close friend. I'm telling you, it is far easier to turn a client into a friend than it is to turn a friend into a client. What you really need to do is your one job of marketing. And you accomplish that by developing relationships with several thousand strangers. When I took a deep dive to understand where my business cash flow was coming from after winning every award my company had for sales success, I quickly realized that the people who made my business financially successful were not people I knew when I first started my business. Allow me to save you months and years of frustration and failures. Get it in your head that you need to develop relationships with several thousand strangers. So the sooner you get started, the sooner you can have financial stability and predictability. When there is lack of confidence in market conditions, that is when consumers turn to experts the most because they have questions and fear. They don't know the right thing to do. Should I wait? Should I sell now? Should I buy first? And since people don't like to be sold to, but they do like to buy things, you need to take on the role of educator consultant, and confidant. And if you watched our training on how to turn customers into clients, you'll learn the important distinction in just how to do this. Now, one big fallacy you need to realize is that there's a lot less to overcome when trying to sell to strangers. You see, your friends and family members know all of your past history, all the times you failed, struggled, read a feud with someone, had financial troubles, got drunk, you know, whatever. That's why strangers respect and trust you more than friends and family do. That's a big statement to remember. Strangers trust and respect your authority far more than friends and family. 
because they don't have to unpack or overcome your past baggage. Now don't get me wrong, I am not saying to stop communicating with your friends and family members about real estate. But what I am telling you is that if you make that your business model, you will likely experience starvation and frustration as you try to grow your business in real estate. Because you do not know enough people who will take your advice. Not even close. The sooner you realize that you need a business plan, and more importantly, implementation of that business plan to develop relationships with strangers, and lots of them, the sooner you will bring stability and balance to your life. Now, a side benefit of working with strangers is that you can teach them to respect your business hours so that you can have sanity and balance instead of working all hours of the night and weekends. But how do you do this? I'll leave a link below to our training, Realtor School Didn't Teach You How to Get Customers. All right, make sure you jot down these key points. A, sales is a contact sport. B, the vast majority of professionals fail in real estate because they simply don't have enough relationships who will take their advice. And C, with strangers, you are not preceded with baggage of a past life where you are not a real estate agent. And D, therefore, a stranger will respect your expertise and time far more than friends and family, otherwise known as your sphere of influence. Now make sure your marketing message is targeted to attract your ideal client type. In our next training video, we'll spend some time to help you understand why so many real estate professionals complain why friends and family buy with strangers instead of with you. Please don't forget to share this training with your colleagues. Look, I can see you developing a more professional image already. To your success. Cheers.